Hello everyone, and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hujuana, and today we are returning to the subject of weapons in space, this time focusing on missiles, or rockets, or torpedoes, or whatever you wish to call them. Either way, these munitions completely changed the face of warfare upon their introduction, and they will remain an extraordinarily potent option up in vacuum. More realistic missiles are often paired with kinetic weapons to give a setting an approachable, understandable feeling in line with modern warfare, but they are also used in more fantastical settings most often as something Worf wasn't allowed to use. This video though will be focused a bit more on the somewhat realistic side of things as there's just more to talk about there. Sorry Worf. We're going to start off with the main reason you'd even use missiles, their potential very long range. This is despite them being generally slower than kinetics, though speed in space warfare is a complicated thing, and is all down to being able to adjust their heading to intercept their target. If fighting at extreme distance, this can turn things into a bit of a range contest between the target and the missile. Who will run out of propellant first? Does the target have decent enough point defence to protect itself? This of course assumes that guidance is flawless, and that just ain't true. Some of the earlier air-to-air -air missiles in real life, such as the AIM-9B, had infrared sensors that often locked onto the sun or even a particularly bright cloud rather than the intended target. So if the setting has lower tech missiles, having them lock onto heat sources other than the radiators and engines on the target is entirely possible. This opens things up for countermeasures like effective flares and decoys in such a setting, and weird foibles with fractions can also be considered. For example, are enemy missiles designed to go for hotter or colder heat sources as they might be trying to outsmart flares? Are flares themselves hotter or colder than the heat source they are trying to distract from? If more sophisticated guidance exists in a setting, then it follows that more sophisticated countermeasures would also need to exist. When flares are less effective against more smart rear missiles, perhaps more direct methods of blinding or destroying sensors could be used. The thing is, all these sensors used for guidance require power to work, and at the potential range of space combat they'd need some huge batteries, or perhaps even an onboard method of power generation. The other kind of missile is unguided, which may also be referred to as a rocket, torpedo, an oversized firework, you get the gist of it. Naturally, these are going to be far shorter range than the guided variety, but on the plus side they can really sell a certain aesthetic, like torpedo bombers and boats, or even those weird World War II rocket-based anti-air systems with primitive proximity fuses that didn't really work. Which brings us to warheads. These can be highly variable, both in yield and how they do damage, from high explosive to shaped charges to nuclear to other more exotic things. While on the subject of nuclear weapons in space though, I am saving those for a whole separate video, as they are more complicated and interesting than you might realise. Subscribe now to be notified when that one comes out, and you may as well like the video too while you're at it. Back to warheads, and in the high explosive category we have to be aware of the loss of shockwaves from being in a vacuum, which will severely severely reduce the effectiveness of such weapons outside of a direct hit. Such hits will be absolutely devastating to a lightly armoured vessel though, unless it has a whole bunch of spaced armour to counter such attacks. There are not going to be many volume limits on spacecraft, unless you have a Suez or Panama Canal analogy like jump gates, so putting a huge empty shell around your ship as spaced armour might be a good shout. That only really works once though, as explosives would rip it apart. The lack of shockwaves also means there's no proximity option here unless you build in a lot of shrapnel all the same, shredding fragile radiators or something. If a setting has ships with big thick armour, then shaped charge warheads are going to be very common, much like they are in real life. I'm going to gloss over these a little because, well... Another option for dealing with armour might very well be using the kinetic energy of the missile. This was looked into for anti-tank weaponry back in the Cold War, with the idea being to create cheaper missiles that were still capable of dealing with increasingly resilient Soviet armour assets. One of the most developed of these was the Line of Sight Anti-Tank, or LOSAT program, which had a really cool looking launcher turret as well as a very uncool looking Humvee mounted version. There was a follow up program to LOSAT that aimed to make it smaller and cheaper, but the limited versatility of kinetic missiles, the high developmental cost and high capability of tandem warheads and top attack modes on other missiles meant kinetic ones never really went anywhere, but up in space they might be far more useful. The thing is, a regular missile that can carry a warhead is a very versatile thing. As they are essentially just miniature spacecraft, you can use them for all sorts of things beyond blowing each other up. They can be transport devices to carry things from ship to ship. They can be outfit with sensors and scanners and used as scientific probes, or you could rig a probe with a warhead. They can be used for electronic warfare, pouring out 
out EM spectrum noise or just exploded to blind or even destroy incoming missiles. I suppose you could make a kinetic warhead that's just a chunk of solid mass, but the same can be said of a warhead that smacks into its target and just doesn't explode. Its sheer speed means it's still going to really hurt whatever it hits. Another big consideration is just how you are going to mount them on your vessel. A very common modern option is the vertical launch system, which is a series of boxy self-contained modules that missiles launch vertically out of, before rapidly changing their trajectory to head on to their target. These highly agile missiles have the benefit of being able to be launched whenever and at whatever heading the ship is at, compared to say, torpedo style weapons. If you want to use them for point defence, putting the launcher on a turret improves response time, and generally is easier as point defence missiles themselves won't be quite so chunky. Still, a lot bigger individually than shots from a gun though. This is one of the big downsides of missiles, as while well, yes they do have guidance and carry potent warheads, they are also each much more expensive and larger than regular ammunition. Unless you go full anime of course. Launching many more smaller missiles makes them harder to deal with on the defensive side, but then they each do less damage. They also might be less capable, as it's harder to squeeze in certain components which may very well have a minimum size, like sensors or batteries to power them. Larger missiles are going to be far more capable and significantly more damaging, but they are also easier to hit by point defence, so might need armour or even countermeasures of their own. And now you're really blurring the already very blurry line between missile and spaceship here, so what's best? I don't know, it depends. Maybe mixing the two together? One big missile that carries lots of smaller ones to a target? If your missile is intended to work in atmosphere, it's probably going to look something like this. A tube with fins. In vacuum, they don't need to conform to that same shape for aerodynamic reasons, so you can make them whatever shape you really want. Though there might be considerations on cross-section for dealing with point defence, as a smaller target is harder to hit. There's also no need for aerodynamic control services, as it'll instead rely on thrust vectoring and RCS for changing its heading. The trade-off on shape is how easy they are to store and launch, as a long tube compared to a squat sphere is easier to stack into a launcher. Oh yeah, and all those pretty smoke trails? That wouldn't happen. Rocket exhausts in vacuum spread out very quickly. Smoke trails look pretty and do increase visual clarity, but are just another atmosphere only thing. I'm not saying don't use them, as they can look absolutely killer. Another consideration is just what your missile uses to move. What's its propellant? A solid rocket motor is cheap, has high acceleration, but is relatively short-ranged for space combat. Going for more efficient technologies like liquid fuel engines or fusion or hand wave tech increases range, but also cost. This level of specificity rarely gets mentioned in sci-fi beyond adding a bit of flavour to things, but it's worth mentioning anyway. Lastly, missiles have little to no heat burden on the ship that launched them as they are self-contained. If the vessel that launched it is providing some sensor guidance or something, there's going to be a little bit of heat generated from that, but that's not really all that much in the grand scheme of things. However, if the missiles use beamed power for propulsion, the heat load for its engine is entirely on its mothership. Beamed power propulsion can also dramatically increase its range as it piggybacks the mothership's capabilities, though this all depends on the type of propulsion and some other stuff. It does bring up the question of if you're capable of beaming enough power to propel a missile, can you not just shoot your beam at the enemy? A few more specifics there to ponder. I hope these points get you thinking about how these high damage delivery systems are used in existing settings, or perhaps one you are creating, be it realistic or fantastical. If it's the latter, then you can do whatever really, but even something crazy advanced like Star Trek recognises that a hit from a torpedo is a big ol' thing to be concerned about, and has used them in important roles in multiple stories across the years. Star Wars has too, but also has these, so I'm not sure. If it's something you're creating though, you can be as detailed as you like about these things, just try to keep it self-consistent. A super realistic missile with drop tanks doesn't really fit that great in a technology is magic sort of setting. Thank you for watching! If you want to support these videos and Space Dock in general, you can become a channel member or join our Patreon and have your name featured either on the Space Dock channel page or right here at the end of each video. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.